no corruption. How about that? So with that in mind, I want to bring this message today. And I pray God help me. Father, help me today to share what you've laid in my heart. Now, you've been uh, speaking my heart for weeks and even months about these things. And Lord, today is the day you want me to share it. And I pray, Lord, that it will come forth unhindered. And Lord, that it will touch our hearts, fill up your church. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Bible is made up of, it is a book. The Bible, the word Bible means book. It's a book of books. It's a book of 66 books from uh, different times in the history of the world. Uh, it's written by men of all different kinds of backgrounds, education, influence. It's written by shepherds, princes, sons of pharaohs, uh, farmers. It's written by a doctor, Luke. It's written by a tax collector, Matthew. All different kinds of fishermen, Peter, John, all different walks of life, kings, King David, Solomon was a king. And as you read each book, in each book there are stories, <coughs> individual stories. And sometimes when we come and we we'll focus on the story or the parable of the prodigal son, right, or good Samaritan, we can focus on individual stories or accounts of people that have been healed. But the Bible also has all together, when you look at it all together, it has these overriding, what we call meta-narratives, narratives, or these threads of truth that wind through the whole story from Genesis to Revelation. For one, there is a uh, scarlet thread that runs from Genesis to Revelation of the blood, the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. The shedding of blood in the Old Testament and all the way through down to the cross, the shedding of the blood of Jesus and to the book of Revelation where the writer says they overcame them by their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. So we have this theme running through the scriptures. So I want to look at one of those themes today. So we're going to move around a little bit. So I, I want you to know that I'm not just taking scriptures out, putting this together to uh, say what I want to say. Jeremiah chapter 50. I want to talk about the clash of the kingdoms. The clash of kingdoms. There are two kingdoms on the planet in, in existence, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. The word that the Lord spoke against Babylon, against the land of the Chaldeans, by Jeremiah the prophet. This is a prophecy by the man of God named Jeremiah. <clears throat> Declare among the nations, proclaim and set up a standard. Proclaim. Do not conceal it. In other words, don't hide it. Proclaim with a loud voice. Distribute it. Uh, the language actually says make a, make a signet, make a, a banner and wave. It's kind of like a billboard. Proclaim, publish this, put it on the front page, put it on uh, Fox News. Proclaim this message. It is a judgment against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans. Declare among the nations and proclaim and set up a standard. Proclaim, do not conceal it. Say Babylon is taken, Bel is ashamed, and Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are humiliated, her images are broken in pieces. 
From out of the north, a nation comes up against her, which shall make her land desolate, and no one shall dwell therein. They shall move, they shall depart, both man and beast. In the writing of Jeremiah, he's speaking of a nation, an empire that was in control of the world at that time, a world empire, the Babylonian Empire. In the nations, in the history of the world, there have been four major empires that have been in control. Egypt, in the time of Moses. Babylon. The Medes and the Persians. The Greeks. The Greek Empire under Alexander the Great. And the Roman Empire. That's five, isn't it? And I said four, that's five. In their time, in their ages, these, these empires have been set up and we're going to see that they have many things in common in their day. In Moses' day in Egypt, Egypt was supreme. Nobody could match her for political power, for influence, for financial power. She was the queen of the Nile. She was the queen of the earth. Fast forward to the days that we're reading today. Babylon. Great Babylon. We're going to see later that Prophet Daniel says that, that Babylon was part of the head of gold of, of Nebuchadnezzar's dream that he had. Mighty. Filled the earth. The world trembled at the armies of the Babylonians as they approached. It was glorious. It had one of the seven wonders of the world. The hanging gardens of Babylon. The pyramids today are one of the seven wonders of the world. People still travel around the world, from around the world to go and see the pyramids of Giza and to see the great sphinx. The Babylonian kingdom fell. And the prophet Jeremiah here is prophesying that fall. Nobody that lived in Babylon in his day would ever dream that this empire would crumble, that it would fall. It was too mighty. It was too powerful. It had too much wealth. Who could withstand against the power of the Babylonians? There wasn't an army on earth that was powerful enough to bring her down. But God says through the prophet, say Babylon is taken. Bell is ashamed and Merodach is broken in pieces. Who are these, these uh, individuals, Bell and Merodach? They were the gods of Babylon. These were the, the gods that they worshipped. These were the gods that they turned to for power and strength. These were the gods that they sacrificed children to. These were the gods that they conquered land in their name. They were the the things, the institutions in their society that they trusted in and that they leaned on. And God says when he moved against Babylon, the first thing he attacked, the first thing he brought down was their idols and their gods, the things that they trusted in. Their very foundation was shaken to the core as he brought judgment upon the very things that they trusted in. When you read about the plagues in Egypt, each one of those plagues was a direct attack at one of the gods of Egypt. The Nile was worshipped. And what happened to the Nile in Moses' day? It turned to blood. It, it began to produce frogs and all of these things. Mm. They worshipped frogs in Egypt. Did you know that? Mm. So every one of their gods was judged. So God says, I will bring that down. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7. This is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And at the end of his teachings, he closes with this truth. Verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, 
and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Throughout history, there have been two houses being built. Two houses are being built. One is the, the house that is built on the sand. There are two kingdoms, two houses. One is being built on the sand. It's being built on the world, the flesh, and the devil. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. These houses have been built over the centuries. They've been impressive. They've been powerful. But each one of them in their, in their time, when the storm came, when the floods came, they crumbled around the feet of those who built them. The, the empire of the Egyptians crumbled. It crumbled. It, lays in the sands of history. The Babylonian Empire, the feared Babylonians, turn to Daniel chapter 3. Turn to Jan Daniel chapter 3. See, as much as we have individual stories in the scriptures, God sees the, the big picture. There's big picture stuff going on here. And we're in the story, folks. The United States is in the story. We are the very place that all these empires found themselves. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Chapter 3, verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. 60 cubits, and he made this image. Chapter 4, I'm sorry. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And in his dream, he sees an image. It is made up of different metals, precious metals. Chapter 4, verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, with the rest of my house and flourishing in my palace, I saw a dream which made me afraid and the thoughts of my bed and visions of my head troubled me. Therefore I issued a decree, bring all the wise men of Babylon before me that they might made known to me the interpretation of the dream. He has a dream, and he sees an image. It has a head of gold. It has a, a torso of silver. It has legs of iron. It has feet of clay. Daniel tells the king, you, O Nebuchadnezzar, you are the head of gold. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, a mighty kingdom. And after you, another kingdom will come. The Medes and the Persians. We don't have time to do it today, but in a night, in a night, the Babylonian kingdom fell. In a night, they were invaded. Overnight. And Babylon fell. Its gods were judged. After the Medes and the Persians, modern day Persia, modern day Iraq, modern day Iran, came Alexander the Great. And the great Greek Empire was established. After the Greek Empire came, the Romans, 
the Romans were depicted as iron. And it's a, it's a great depiction because it said, as, as iron crushes things, so this nation, this empire, will crush its enemies. And that was a picture of the Roman Empire. They crushed. They crushed, utterly crushed, those that stood in their way. Well, each one of these kingdoms, as beautiful as they were, and as powerful as they were, and as mighty as they were, and influential as they were, they were built on the sand. Their God wasn't the God of Israel. Their God wasn't the Lord. They worshipped the stars, and they worshipped the, the, the idols of clay and wood. And each one of them, upon each one of them, a storm came. A storm. Where does the storm come from? Who's the storm sender? The Lord is the storm sender. He sends the storm. Why? Because the word of God is going to come to pass. His plans are going to happen. When God says something, you can mark it down. It's happening. It's coming. Now these storms came in the forms of different things for different, uh, different uh, empires. But most of it, listen, most of it came from within. As they became powerful, as they became mighty, and they became prosperous, pleasure, what we call hedonism, paganism, the love of pleasure, the love of things, the lusts of the flesh, the corruption, the greed, it began to eat at the foundation of these civilizations. Rome fell from within before it was ever uh, invaded by outside forces. It began to decay from within, the cancer of sin, because where there's no God, where there's no power of God, people don't have the power to withstand. They live in these darknesses, they live in this bondage, and the nations and the uh, empires crumble. Matthew. We'll go back to Matthew chapter 7. Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But whoever hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. See, these two houses look very different to the outside observer. The house that the world is building is impressive. It's flashy. It's got all the bells and whistles. When you look on MTV, they show you the, the Maserati. They show you all the girls. They show you all the good looking guys. They show you them in the clubs and having a good time. They show you all the good things. They show you all the things that your heart could desire. Build your house here. Come, come on in this house. They never show you the cemeteries. They don't show you the car wrecks. They don't show you the, the overdoses. They don't show you this, the insane asylums. They don't show you the broken families. They don't show you the children who are abused by those who go home, intoxicated by those beverages. They don't show you the destruction and the death. that God is building. The kingdom. To the outside onlooker, it doesn't look very impressive. To the world, 
We don't look very impressive over here, do we? Here we are, the church. We don't have a Sony Magnafox television like on Times Square. We don't have a surround sound sound system. We don't have any of that. We don't have those bells and whistles. The, the church, the church of Jesus Christ does not get its power or its, or its uh, bona fides from those things. We are a different kingdom. We're different than that kingdom. We're different than that. We don't need the popularity of the world. We don't need their say-so, their okay, and their accolades. We are called into the kingdom. And the kingdom operates on a different economy than the economy of this other house. It is built on the rock. It's built on the rock of the scriptures, of the truth of this book. It matters. It matters what we say. It matters how we live. It yeah. matters how we act when we're by ourselves. It matters what goes on in our minds and in our private thought life. It matters. Because we're not building our house. We're not looking to build our house on the sand. Because look at what the scripture says. Both houses are going to encounter a storm. It doesn't say the person building their house on the rock will be exempt from the storm. It says the storms are coming. The storms come, don't they? One house crumbled, and great was the fall. And I tell you, there's one more collapse coming. You can feel it all around. This great house, this great empire, this global empire that they're looking to build. If the Lord tarries, they're looking to remove our constitutional rights, freedom of speech, freedom of worship, the right to protect ourselves. The days are coming when it will be illegal for me to say that homosexuality is a sin. And I will be hauled off in shackles. It's coming. It's coming. But something else is coming too. Something else is on the way. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation 19 and 20. See, because there's another storm coming. There's another flood. This flood won't be armies of men. Chapter 21. Sorry, Revelation 21. It won't be armies of men. Chapter 21, verse 9. And talk to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lord's wife. That's you and me, folks. We're the Lord's wife. We're the bride. You're the bride. The church. We're the bride. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. And he showed me that great city the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Folks, this is not a fairy tale. This is not pie in the sky. This is the end of the great narrative we're talking about when the, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. Jesus. 
the last great kingdom to occupy, the last great empire to occupy this planet will be the kingdom of the Messiah. Hallelujah. It's coming. Yes. <clears throat> Descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates. The kingdom of God has a wall around it. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked to me had a golden reed to measure the city, and you can read it yourself, but the inhabitants of that city will be people from every nation, every tribe, every tongue. It will be a multicultural city. It will be the multicultural empire. But the, the difference will be is that the king will not be Donald Trump. It will not be Hillary Clinton, thank God. It will not be any potentate or, or, or politician that we see on the stage today or that are to come or the Antichrist. The, the king on that throne will be Jesus himself the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And his kingdom will reign forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I know it's grim out there. I know it's dark. And it may get darker before the dawn. There may be some storms that are yet to come. And we're going to see some of the institutions of men crumble. We're going to see the idols of America fall. We're going to see the idols that America has trusted in. They trusted in Bell and Murdoch and Babylon. We've got some idols in our nation as well that we trust in. I call it the Supreme Court. I call it the Office of the Presidency, the educational system. These are idols of Hollywood that we have trusted in and we have gained wealth and popularity and notoriety around the world. But those idols are going to crumble and they're going to fall. That's right. Why is God going to judge them? Because they have not, they have not carried forth their God-given. Did you know that the scripture says that authorities are raised up and ordained of God to, to bring forth the justice of God? And when they pervert that, that place and that office, God himself will move against them. Revelation 11, 15, I end here. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and forever. And the 24 elders who were before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, Listen to what they say. We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. In the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints. You may not be a prophet here today, but you're a saint. You may be a prophet, I don't know, but you certainly are a saint. You've been set apart by the Lord. He will judge those who have, look at what it says, <coughs> and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. That kingdom is coming. In order for the Medes and the Persians to come, Babylon had to go. 
in order for the Greeks to come, the Medes and the Persians had to crumble and fall. In order for Rome to rise up, the, the Greek Empire had to fall under their feet. kingdom is coming. Amen. The kingdom is coming. That's what he says. And now on that day, every knee shall bow. Mm -hmm. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. Read it. Every knee. Yeah. Every atheist is going to bow his knee and say that Jesus is Lord. Every every killer, everyone who destroyed children's lives, every one of them are going to kneel before the throne and they're going to say, you are Lord, including Amen. Satan himself. Right. Amen. We're on the right side. We're in the right kingdom. The kingdom is being built. It is being established. And it, he will reign forever. Let us begin to praise him. Begin to thank him today. Begin to thank him. Glory. Hallelujah. Don't ever think that God has lost control. He is completely in control. He is completely in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. Let's just stand in the presence of God. Just begin to praise Him. Begin to thank Him. Thank Him today. Thank Him today. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We praise you today.